Welcome back on the Chaos Zone stage. Uh, I hope you had a great day so far. And uh, uh, after the Algo Rave talk, uh, we're happy to uh, we're happy to host uh, a talk by Andy Müller Magoon. Um, he is a longtime uh, member of the CCC. Now he is at the Wau Holland Stiftung, and he's also a data journalist. And today he will uh, tell us a bit about. Uh, things uh, between WikiLeaks and the CIA and uh, this talk uh, is uh, some kind of successor um, for uh, talks he gave uh, previously and uh, but for all the details I uh, he will he will t uh, tell them by himself and uh, yes uh, uh, welcome, Andy, uh, and uh, we're we're happy uh, to see uh, what you can tell us and all the all the interesting uh, details that that are in your talk. Thank you. Okay. Um, good evening. So um, I named this talk when WikiLeaks bumped into the CIA Operation Kudo Expo. So explain a bit later what that is. Um, just as a reminder, um, the hacker community and the CCC, even in its bylaws, um, one of the core things has always been information wants to be free. First sentence of the hacker ethics. I brought a small snippet from Wau himself, uh, where you will not um, hear the sound at this moment due to technical reasons, but um, where he talked about the hacking of society through freedom of information. Um, my talk will have two parts, what happened so far and um, what should be done now. Uh, in the first part, um, I just want to refer a little bit on the, the context of what I'm talking about. So this is about what happened surrounding WikiLeaks um, in the context of the CIA and the United States government, yeah, getting on them. Um, I had two talks about similar topic, topics already in 2019 at the, um, yeah, unfortunately also, no, that was still the last real Congress. Um, I talked about the technical aspects of the surveillance, and you will see one image that I needed to copy from that again. Then last year, I talked a little bit about the CIA versus WikiLeaks, the invitation tactics. That was more what happened to me and others surrounding WikiLeaks. Um, now, in the meantime, this year, end of September, came a very important article in this context on Yahoo News. That seems to have been doing that um, some guys uh, yeah, have been hired there who previously worked for Newsweek and others. Um, the article from 26th of September is called Kidnapping Assassination at the London Shootout Inside the Secret CIA Secret War Plans Against WikiLeaks. And it did uh, reveal uh, quite some things. It finally referred to my talk. It links even to the video of my talk. It takes some quotes from it. It confirms a lot of it and adds a lot, but it also frames. Uh, and with framing, I mean, um, there is some disinformation um, that's poisoning that otherwise very helpful article to understand what the fuck was going on. Um, so what I'm trying to do today is to reconstruct the whole thing a little bit, to um, reframe it and um, help everybody to understand a little bit what, what happened here. Um, the Yahoo article rightfully um, distinguishes the time frame of the interaction, so to say, between the United States government and WikiLeaks into four to five time frames. Um, one of them at the beginning uh, of the WikiLeaks project, or let's say before Snowden, so before mid-2013, uh, the Obama administration had, although the diplomatic cables have been published by WikiLeaks, Afghan, Iraq warlocks, and so on were out, they had the view that as long as some entity or some people are publishing, are engaging in publicistic, in journalistic activity, 
there's nothing they can do because first amendment of the United States Constitution talks about the freedom of uh, yeah publishing the um, the freedom of speech and the freedom that, that does include journalistic activity of all kinds. Um, after the um, Snowden, not revelations, but the fact that Edward Snowden, Snowden was getting from Hong Kong uh, on the way to somewhere else, but he got to Moscow uh, with the help of um, WikiLeaks editorial member, um, therefore enacting in what you could call journalistic source protection. Um, however, that brought the U.S. government to a slightly different view of WikiLeaks. They didn't really like it. So Obama allowed the intelligence community to prioritize collection, WikiLeaks, search warrants, opponents, national security letters. So here we're not talking about, as far as the article mentions, about the legal investigation yet. This is more intelligence work to, like they allowed them to, to get on them. Uh, they also, in the context of the Snowden revelations now, where it wasn't WikiLeaks, it was Glenn Greenwald and Laura Poitras, who had been given by Edward Snowden the material, and they uh, published the material together with Guardian, the Spiegel, others. Um, I was personally also involved with the Spiegel, I should disclose. Um, however, they tried to relabel um, not only WikiLeaks, but also Glenn, Laura, and others, uh, from journalists away to like information brokers. They tried all kinds of definitions to uh, yeah, circumvent the protection of the United States Constitution, you could say. Um, <clears throat> that went not that far. At least I have no actively knowledge of a criminal prosecution uh, running against Laura and Glenn. However, there was for sure intelligence activities that they also reported on and everybody who was involved in the publications. As you might know from history, the Guardian was later forced to even destroy the computers where they had processed the Snowden material and so on. So there was quite some things going on. In 2016, the next, um, yeah, like milestone in the change of the relations between the United States government and WikiLeaks, to say it nicely, uh, was the publication of the DNC emails that, by the definition of the National Security um, Agency, uh, um, like they said, this was good to refer to zero, was the Russian military intelligence, the GRU, and that the whole publication was with the intention to hurt the interests of the United States. Um, this now is um, a first point where we, where we could sit back from our European perspective here a little bit and say, wait a moment, uh, this was about leaking, I mean, this was leaked emails or however, let's say it was emails that somehow got leaked, obtained or otherwise, but in any way, WikiLeaks published them. Um, what the discussion was about was how Hillary Clinton had treated Bernie Sanders um, as the other candidate of the Democratic Party. And he obviously did not made it, she made it. Um, so this, we could call this exposing of facts in the public interest, but as I said, the United States, at least National Security Agency and others, seem to have agreed that this was, you know, intended to harm the United States. Not what Hillary Clinton did, but what WikiLeaks did in this publication. Um, I think it's important that we distinguish between how we um, evaluate these things and how the U.S. government puts these into different baskets or categories. Um, however, then it got much more wild when WikiLeaks started at the beginning of 2017 to publish with the so-called Fold 7 series um, some documents from the Central Intelligence Agency from the CIA. Mike Pompeo was in charge of it. I did talk about this at length, and I want to repeat this last year. So he got very upset personally because he was also potentially personal responsibility responsible for it. So it was his, under his watch, so to say. Um, however, the framing aspects of the article are 
worth um, having a brief look. The uh, What happened this year was also that the key witness of the prosecution, an Icelandic guy called Sigurdur Tordason, um, made it public that actually he lied to the FBI and that they fabricated part of the evidence based on his lies, also they could have verified things. He later even was imprisoned for um, his multiple illegal acts and the Icelandic government saw it as reason enough to uh, declare him a danger to society and therefore lock him up and that's not happening um, that easily in a country like Iceland. Normally people are very calm and mm -hmm. down to earth. However, the article came just after, a few weeks after the um, publications on this fabricated evidence. And it's fair to say that the gravity of the Yahoo article was a lot higher and a lot more was discussed than, than about the fake um, evidence of the key witness and so on. Um, however, one other aspect that was in the Yahoo article um, was um, a, a thing that is, from my reading, and I've talked to many people, there was no evidence for this whatsoever. The Yahoo article claimed that there was the Russian government also having like kind of officers in front of the Ecuadorian embassy or in the immediate surrounding preparing to uh, help Julian to evacuate him, so to say, from England to sneak him out, as the article says, Russian Inter preparing to sneak Assange out of the UK. Um, this is a little bit wild, um, and it's double wild when you, or when one looks at how the involvement of the Russian government, how that upsets American people, the American media, and so on. This is such a polarized environment where the moment the Russian government is declared to be involved, it changes everything. What happened really here was something different, and that is that Julian had, in cooperation and in coordination with the Ecuadorian government, uh, found a way to legally leave the embassy and the United Kingdom um, by becoming first an Ecuadorian citizen, then an Ecuadorian diplomat. And then in theory, he would have been able to leave the UK because a diplomat on the way to a different working place has under Vienna diplomatic assurances uh, is immune from any kind of interference. However, the article um, does reveal some aspects of what happened. Um, for example, the kidnapping plans, the assassination plans that, they, that the US government considered the CIA played through ways to kill him in the embassy, to poison him, um, to kidnap him from there. These kind of extreme acts did not happen. And the article claims that, you know, justice prevailed, the White House lawyers had doubts, the National Security Council and the heads of the Senate and um, uh, House Intelligence Committees uh, ensured that this wild ideas, because they were not uh, compatible with the legal framework, not even with that of the United States, um, that that did not happen. So the article gives you kind of this 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 American song melody of, yeah, we had some wild things at the CIA going on, but you know, we are a democracy and we stopped it. However, there were some actions that were, according to the article, and the, the witnesses and lawyers I talked to well caught out, extensive spying on Wikileaks associates, stealing of electronic devices, um, then there were things there we could talk about, like the article claims that um, to what was also carried out, sowing discord among the group's members. So now if any one of you um, is longer than a few weeks in a, in a CCC like Hacker Club or working for a journalist organization or working in any other group, I mean, according to my little experience, there's quite a fight club atmosphere out there for a while. And I'm personally, I wouldn't always be able to distinguish between is this now a CIA operated, you know, group fight or is this normal, normal group dynamics, people don't like each other, people having disputes, people having different ideas on how to do things and so on. So 
I would suggest to take this kind of claim with a with a grain of salt. Not every dispute among a group has been created by the CIA. Also, I'm I'm, I'm very generous on, on bashing them. Um, <clears throat> however, they also talked that at some point they changed the whole context of Julian and Wikileaks from a target of collection to a target of disruption. Well, for sure, some things happened there, but um, this is not what I can um, go into detail as I have no, no detailed report on it. Um, however, the project I talked about, that Julian would get legally out of the embassy um, as a member of Ecuadorian diplomatic staff, um, is um, coming together in a very is like the most uh, critical time frame, also according to the article, and that we were able with the we were going through with the lawyers the um, log files of the embassy security service, the videos and so on. So we have been able to identify the time frame, and this the time frame is the 16th of December 2017 until the 26th. Um, this is the most um, critical time frame because around the 16th, he was officially not only declared a diplomat, there was a publication in the Ecuadorian, like legal, um, Gazeta, what it's called, so like the legal publication in Ecuador uh, to have him declared. Uh, he had around the 21st, uh, the head of the Ecuadorian intelligence visiting him. So that means he also had the diplomatic passport. It was fully formally done. Uh, there was a discussion of the process. And this meeting on the 21st, I had mentioned it in my talk last year, was the most high priority conversation that ever uh, happened in the embassy, at least as far as we know from the witnesses of the security service who later revealed to the court that they, they had been, yeah, instructed on behalf of the CIA to do other things than to protect the embassy, but to spy on Julian. So this meeting on the 21st was extremely important to the Americans. And we do know roughly that the whole story ended uh, through various means, but uh, mainly through pressure on the, you know, on the Ecuadorian government in Quito, in Ecuador, um, around the 26th, when they actually called the plan off because the Americans knew about every detail, including how he would get out of the embassy, in what type of car and so on. Um, and um, they also then at some point denounced his diplomatic status after pressure from, pressure from the United States government. Um, in this time frame, I made here a little bit um, of an event matrix which is completely incomplete, I have to say. Um, there's many things missing for legal, for other reasons. Um, you know, some things are just too wild. The US government, for example, would never break into European law office, right? We can, that, that's bullshit, that's conspiracy stuff. They don't do these things. They, of course, comply with the law. However, we have some events that um, are, are funny and fit well into our picture, for example, that after on the Saturday, the, the lawyers from Spain and England were sitting together with Julian. Like two days later, in preparation of that meeting on the 21st came the fire protection service into the embassy. And those who have seen my talk last year know that the, one of the fire extinguishers played in the meeting room, the main role for holding a buck. Um, however, I'm coming to that. Then we have um, this, observation that every day in this time frame there was a, a silver gray Ford car with sometimes two, sometimes three, sometimes more people uh, sitting outside the embassy, uh, seeming obviously to wait for instructions, something to happen. I'm coming to that. And we have um, other things going on at that time frame that kind of fit in the, in the frame. Um, so on the 
I selected three events to talk about them a few minutes. The first is this fire extinguisher. Here you see it. And in the on the right picture, you see this black uh, bottom of the fire extinguisher. That's where they had a magnetic little box with an audio microphone, I mean, audio box in it that seemed to have not only recorded, but also transmit the conversations in life uh, to the American intelligence uh, outside. Um, <clears throat> Finally, this um, on the 18th comes uh, a company not even from London, the Iceland Fire Protection Limited, a guy and goes into all the rooms in the embassy to check the fire extinguishers. Now, according to the lawyers, um, there had been intensive discussions with the employees uh, and David Morales, um, the owner of UC Global, the company that was originally hired to protect the embassy, um, is known to have talked to his people and emailed them, uh, mentioning that the Americans want also all the other rooms at some point to be blocked and want access to the fire extinguishers. Um, we don't know exactly what happened in that discussion to the last detail, but we know that on the 18th came this British company. And um, this is a little bit um, crass. And I think there will be many other embassies of other countries who will be interested to check if they don't are maybe serviced by the same company. Um, <clears throat> now, the other uh, nice event that I selected is the night from the 23rd to the 24th, so the very mo morning, early morning hours on the 24th, so December morning, uh, Christmas morning, so to say, um, <clears throat> where you have the three guys sitting in the car and on the back seat on the right side, someone reads the briefing notes. I will show you the, um, oops, don't tell me this. Hopefully it works. Oh, great, the video doesn't work. I'm sorry, I can't show you the video today, maybe courtesy of the CIA. Um, however, um, so the guy in the back seat browses through the briefing notes, and we have been able to at least, at least read part of what they have been, um, what these briefing notes say. Um, it says this page that we have been able to read mostly was in the event of loss of camera coverage. So there was a process to be established when the surveillance cameras in the embassy wouldn't deliver pictures anymore. And the guys outside sitting partly according to the Yahoo article, the British police guys with guns, and they see eight people maybe without guns. Um, would be ready to jump into the scene, a crash diplomatic car, shoot into tires of cars that would try to bring Julian away and so on, um, in the case he would, he would walk out. And um, so there's a few keywords here um, that I just want to emphasize, in the event of loss of camera coverage, then there's talking about an, something called GS7, that might be code word for CIA or something different. MET is clearly the Metropolitan Police. Um, that's an, a normal acronym in England. And um, they talk about the context of the operation KUDO. So we looked up the word KUDO. KUDO is something saying roughly like friendship. So um, we have to assume this was a joint British American operation, and that's exactly what the Yahoo article describes. However, what it does not describe is the legal implication, because um, this could well be one of the most or best well documented breaches of the Vienna Convention, basically saying that the premises of the mission shall be inviol inviolable, um, which is normally means that you shall not bug, you shall not, you know, put surveillance devices, cameras, hidden cameras, or whatever, you shall not hack into the camera surveillance system of an embassy as the host state and so on. Um, so that intelligence do it and that the CIA was doing it in the case of the Ecuadorian embassy is already a part of a Spanish lawsuit. However, the dimension is a little bit different as the British police seems to have access have had access to that 
video surveillance, and that is a potentially legally different thing. That will be subject to some um, legal steps going on in the next weeks and months. Um, <clears throat> the third event I selected more for relaxation, for relaxation issues is on the last day. You see here two police officers carrying an astonishing amount of eight cups of coffee, coffee for relatively small police car. Um, that gives you an idea what was going on there. The British police um, being prepared. This is here the site. Uh, the the conference room is about in the area where the where the trash bin on the left side is. Um, so giving you an idea of how intense the British police was also in the scene outside. Um, so what is currently happening with this and a lot of other material is, well, checking the violations of the Vienna Convention, um, then pausing together many of the events and, and observing patterns and trying to see those patterns at other places, as we, of course, still do not know the full scope of the operations of the CIA and other intelligence agencies against WikiLeaks. This is just the tip of the iceberg, what happened in London. Um, but also to see where other journalists, where other citizens, where other governments, organizations, whatever, were maybe targeted with same or similar ways and methods. Um, so with, this brings me to the second part of my little talk, um, the question what needs to be done. So, and I try to first um, invite you to a little reflection because the, as some of you might know, uh, Julian Assange presented the WikiLeaks project in the CCC Congress end of 2009, if I recall correct. He made another talk in 2010. Uh, this was very much a project of the hacker community, and it was highly welcomed at the time because it was like combining the idea of freedom of information, which had always been in sharing information, which had always been the spirit of the hacker scene, with those of journalists and democratic um, yeah, think tanks to ensure that we would have actually an informed society, not this this very weird concept of an information society, which, which does not really say anything between the relationship between information and society, but an informed society is a clear picture, I think, and therefore the better wording. Um, so the other question is, of course, is what, what, what does this whole thing, this what we have been reading in the Yahoo article and what we're now uh, step by step here revealing and starting to understand, what does it tell us about that the United States government's uh, yeah, prosecution at DOJ, Pompeo, the CIA, all these people, um, how compatible are they really to decide to society that is based on an informed electorate, like the people making decisions uh, based on knowledge and voting based on knowing what is going on. And that's uh, slightly disturbing, I think, what we, what this thought brings us to. So here's my little ideas, and then um, I will just come with some um, questions to the audience. Um, so, yeah, what can we do? And what would maybe should we do? This is here just um, some ideas of mine. Um, well, we could, of course, hope that the United States the people of the United States, the government of the United States, uh, would understand the core democratic value of the tax here when going against Assange, WikiLeaks, and so on. So, in theory, we should, uh, we could hope that the self-healing or the self-understanding uh, mechanisms of the United States society uh, will stop this madness because they will see, hey, wait a moment, this is our constitutional First Amendment that we are attacking here indirectly. And if we don't have, um, like, the publisher's right, the journalists and publisher's right to inform the public, then we have nothing. Um, well, the second, obviously, level would be to dissolve the CIA. Um, yeah, I mean, Kennedy had this idea before, shatter it in the wind and so on. 
but um, I don't know how at least um, this shall continue with that budget, with the information operations, with the influence operations, where actually um, wag the dog is just a tiny little aspect of it, because the, the question is how shall a democratic government work as long as there's an intelligence agency that has all the knowledge about every person involved in all the little compromise boxes and the aspects of how to nudge and how to influence and how to manipulate and so on. Um, well, and then the third aspect outside the United States uh, here in Europe uh, is, of course, the question of how can we immunize those people, entities, governmental organizations, and so on, where it still seems possible to understand that this is core, that journalism and the right to inform uh, the public by making uh, also information and material public that governments, corporations, or whoever would like to keep secret, but if that documents are uh, playing a role in informing the public in the public interest, then it must be allowed to make it public. And that was what's called the fourth stage or the right of the the press to inform the public. Um, yeah, how can we do that? That's, of course, more a question. And, um, and here's my list of questions that I will um, want to address to the audience. We should have uh, 20 minutes and maybe a few seconds for discussion of this. Um, so, guys, how do we get Jun Assange out of jail? Um, ladies and gentlemen, how do we do it? Um, how do we stop the criminalization of journalism and those who ensure access to information in the public is this in order to achieve an informed society? Um, that's our duty, I fear. Um, how do we ensure a value-driven community? So, as everybody knows, the CCC had always different fractions, the political and the technical fractions. Then came at some point the party, the event, and the hedonism aspects all together, and we had a great fun time, but I'm not sure that we also took care of ensuring that we are a value-driven community all the way. I mean, um, when we look at the CIA and the NSA methods, there's obviously some kind of a atmosphere between those who work in the IT security industry and those who maybe then take offers from the intelligence community. Um, and that's not the spirit of uh, the hacker ethics, and that's not the sp spirit of the CCC, and that's not the spirit of an informed society that's people with money who instrumentalize technology people. And it, you don't have to like look at the CIA as the most crassest maybe entity. It starts with the so-called Open Technology Fund. I mean, we had various years the ability to observe how uh, the, the Tor project uh, had its issues between the two worlds of the US government having this and that ideas and our community having other ideas of how anonymization works. And I'm not sure we can say that our values have been preserved and uh, we have ensured that um, the OTF finance projects do not serve just some funny governmental interest. And when it was relabeled partly from uh, internet freedom to circumvention measures, and that I think gave already some ideas on what could go wrong if, um, yeah, governments start to fund projects of the so-called hacker scene. Um, yeah, so this is my questions to you guys. Um, how do we get him out? How, how do we ensure our society stays intact and democratic? And how do we, as a scene, um, avoid to be corrupted um, by uh, governmental money and funny interests? Um, and I hope the um, moderation can now take over and um, provide some answers from the audience. All right. Thank you very much, Andy, for your talk. Um, uh, let's see um, how this will work. Um, uh, thank you also for your questions to the audience. I th
I will try in the meantime to fix this uh, video and make it um, this one minute, 23 seconds video uh, mm -hmm. so All that right. I can show it. But uh, maybe you can start to take the um, questions. Sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's say to the audience, uh, please uh, put your uh, possible answers to to Andy's questions in the chat. I will I will follow them as uh, as uh, good as I can, and uh, so that we can have a lively discussion. I know it's it uh, might be a bit limited because in a in a presence congress, uh, it would be easier to to interact with with each other and. Um, but uh, yeah, let's 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 see that. And uh, but uh, first of all, um, maybe uh, Andy, uh, if if you have the capacity um, for a question from the interwebs, um, then the question would be: How did you obtain the pictures and camera footage from the embassy? Uh, well, um, this has to do with the legal analysis of this material. Um, I'm myself, um, yeah, here, by the way, you could switch on the video if you wanted. Um, well, I'm myself uh, accusing um, the Spanish company to have spied on me and other colleagues. And so I'm part of that legal proceedings as a such. I'm also helping the lawyers to obtain the technical evidence. There was a shitload of um, digital evidence confiscated that needed forensic examination and so on. So um, this is material accessible to those who have been affected by the um, illegal activities performed by UC Global and others. All right. Um... There, there's also the question of are, are there pictures of the fort or the people inside it, but uh, I think that's uh, pretty much a, a part of the video you m have just shown, or is there something uh, is different? It, is it, I'm sorry, I, I don't see what is being broadcasted. Do you have access to mm -hmm. my uh, sliding to the streaming laptop? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, yes. So this is um, the full video where you where you see the guys um, reading the briefing notes on the back seat. We have been able to mm -hmm. zoom in at a little bit and so on. And uh, yeah, wh where uh, the question was, where did you get that from? But I think you already answered that in the previous question um, it because it's no part answer of to my question. What should we shall do, guys? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so uh, we have one uh, line of feedback, for example, uh, that uh, how to get uh, Julian Assange out of jail. Uh, what one proposal is ask our foreign minister, give Julian German citizenship, make it a uh, Chefsache, so part of the part of the chancellor, uh, uh, that's what it means, uh, in, Jer uh, in every German activities, question mark, would that work? Mm -hmm. It's been worked on. I mean, uh, the new, um, we have a new foreign minister who's a woman um, from the Green Party. And um, she seems to be very much a fan of um, United States-German relationships. I'm not sure how much um, she sees about the lack of values that the US government represents watching the history of the US Constitution and so on. Um, but um, I'm sure there is a lot of work to be done there, and um, the Green Party used to be also interested in a society and stand for human rights and so on. So I would say yes, it's definitely there is a path to go. All right. Um... There's also a question, are you, uh, uh, so you personally, uh, still under surveillance? Uh, do you know? Uh, well, I have taken some legal and, and technical measures and the German authorities um, have some uh, evidence I provided to them still in their analytical labs and so on. Um, uh, it's a little bit um, 
unrealistic to assume that the Americans um, would not uh, continue watching those who surrounded uh, Assange and WikiLeaks and uh, as a member of the Valhalla Foundation and we, we financed the we financed many of the publications and things or aspects of the publication. So it would be unlikely that US lost interest, but at least for the moment, they seem to behave a little bit more, uh, especially after the Yahoo article. I think um, it became very obvious also to the German authorities what was going on. So the article was helpful. It's just that some aspects of the article are just poor rubbish and disinformation that try to uh, smoothen it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, may I ask you to maybe just also uh, bring up again the slides with your question? So uh, we Please will we will have to. One second. I, I think this uh, will help to to spark a bit of yes. discussion also. Sure. Good point. Um, Um, seem to need to browse through it. Um, here are the questions. All right, thank you. And uh, uh, another answer: how to how to get him out of jail uh, uh, is uh, keep talking about Julian Assange and the public. Attend. Uh, Vigils, I don't know what that means actually. Uh, organ, articles, write comments, call the Department of Justice, uh, talk to politicians, communicate. So this is this is one answer. Like like keep yeah. keep 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 the word out. Yeah, I mean let me let me briefly uh, try to interact with whoever um, gave that um, suggestion. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's well known that in. In, in Germany, in France, in some countries, there was quite some campaigns going on in the last months, quite some people on the street um, uh, acting for Julian and series of events and so on. Also, a little bit in England, but England seems to be a very tough um, under two aspects. The one is that um, they don't have that of a self-understanding of a country with a constitution guaranteeing freedom of rights. The, Un the United Kingdom does not have a constitution and it doesn't have what's called constitutional rights. It does have similar statements, but they are not as clearly uh, defined in the, as a value system of a democratic society. So most British people, if you ask them, uh, to do something for freedom of press, they're like the press, these assholes, why should I do something for them? It's, it's, it's all very complicated and a bit polarized over there. And the other aspect is that the UK government, um, to, to say it bluntly, uh, there's quite some people who say that the UK government does what the US government says. And in this case, um, there is no way, um, according to that interpretation, that you can avoid the UK government handing Julian over to the Americans. Um, so the problem needs to be addressed in the US. Um, and Germany and other European countries um, have a, a different history, obviously. And I'm at least sure that if Julian would be in Germany, I'm not sure he would be not having any issues, but there would be a different discussion. However, the um, the question how the so-called old Europe or the continental Europe that is now uh, even more ignored after beer exit from the Brits can have any influence here in England, I would say forget it. On the US, it's more complicated. But um, for the moment, it seems that similar to what happened uh, to Julian and WikiLeaks in our own community, that there was quite a time frame when um, the reputation, the character assassination had taken so much that actually he was seen as, um, as a persona non grata, more or less. Um, the, the United States political atmosphere is even more complicated and more polarized between left, right, and nuts, and whatever. 
that um, it seems a very tricky task to bring some sense into that discussion. As long as you have the military intelligence apparatus and Hillary Clinton saying like, hang him on the highest trees. So there seemed to be quite, and that's also mentioned in the Yahoo article, a, a revenge aspect of the United States legal system here, not only Pompeo, uh, that uh, want to yeah, basically kill Julian as a symbol that no one should ever try to reveal the dirty laundry of the United States. So, yeah, this is a bit tricky and we will need more ideas on how to also um, initiate a better discussion in the United States, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, related to that, uh, 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 another answer we got uh, was, uh, uh, for example, how to how to stop the criminalization of journalism, um, uh, and maybe also other question of these questions uh, is vote for the right people, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, it, it uh, uh, probably can help uh, for some things. And uh, uh, what comes to my mind is, uh, uh, I mean, in, the, in this and also other prosecutions uh, and, and, and trials, uh, there, uh, very often there's some, uh, some ancient laws involved uh, uh, on, on those grounds, uh, people go, uh, get uh, prosecuted, right? Isn't it? Uh, for Julian, there is, uh, there is um, the Intelligence Act, or what's the name it's of the, the, the Act? It's called the Espionage Act. So uh, basically what the U.S. prosecution does is there's a so -called secret grand jury um, that might have even more investigations running against Julian and WikiLeaks than that what has been put into the extradition inquiry to the UK at this point. However, that one already accuses him to violating the Espionage Act, um, not declaring him um, having spied for another country, but finally having revealed secrets to the American public and to the, of course, public of other countries, that's what they call espionage. That's a little bit ridiculous. And it is, however, even more um, of a concern uh, watching the fact that a U.S. journalist would be able to claim the protection of the First Amendment, the right of freedom of speech and the right of publishers and journalists to, and so on. However, they deny that because he's not a U.S. citizen. So the U.S. partially exports their laws and says, well, he violated against this American law called the Espionage Act, but they do not grant him the protection of the U.S. legal system. And that is, to call it hypocrisy is, I'm sorry, is too nice. This is just um, really fucked up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Shouldn't shouldn't we um, shouldn't we try to get rid of the, uh, of uh, maybe like the Espionage Act uh, or or at least um, I'm all I for mean, it. I, I mean, Dissolve the CIA, get rid of the <laughs> Espionage Act. I'm all mm -hmm. for it. I just fear that uh, at least part of our community will have to become I don't know lawyers, lobbyists. Um, maybe we need to look for better communications with the U.S. hacker scene and see if they can uh, kindly get into political consciousness mode and um, uh, get for a moment distracted from technology developments into society developments and see what can be done to ensure that also in the future we have the right as a citizen to know what's happening in our name by governments and so on. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, because for That's example, I, 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 I uh, remember uh, a couple of years ago, I don't know whether it was in the 2013, the year of Snowden or, uh, or, or later, uh, where we also had a uh, talk at Congress about the uh, German uh, uh, 
uh, post uh, surveillance, for example, where uh, back in these, I, I think it was the 70s, uh, uh, where um, where we had um, the uh, the NATO Truppenstatut mm -hmm. uh, uh, got got into play, uh, but there was a verbal note uh, from the uh, from the from the German government uh, who told the Allies, well, we will be part of the NATO Truppenstatut uh, uh, now, but uh, don't don't uh, be afraid. Uh, you will be able to have the powers um, uh, as before under Allied. Uh, law you could say and uh, only after this uh, the information the the investigative journalism or, or of, or of or I think it was a history uh, historian um, exactly Mr. Foscherpot uh, uh, only after that came out uh, uh, the government had to say okay well uh, we, we, we want to stop this and now this uh, at least officially is, is over well, I mean, um, it's not really over. Germany is still a member of the NATO, and these regulations are still in place. And just to have it said, I mean, the Fall 7 revelations, if you look at the publications of WikiLeaks, you will see the modules the CIA uh, had uh, developed to make a software, a Trojan, a malware, uh, whatever kind of manipulation software look like it was coming from a specific country or time zone. So to make uh, malware or attacks on IT systems, make them look like they come from Russia, China, Iran, you name it, North Korea, I should list as well. Um, and this is the scenario we're looking at already. If you, if you look at the news, what happened the last years, we had all these attacks. It was Russia, it was China, it was Iran, it was North Korea. I most probably have forgotten some um, other um, people who it was blamed on. But um, the discussion that the CIA would be having the tools to uh, make attribution misleading to a country, so what's called a false flag operation in military terms, um, is creating a scenario where exactly we as a NATO member are now looking into military-like conflicts again um, because the media environment has been so poisoned with um, it was those guys and those guys hacking our IT, our parliament, our you name it. Um, this worries me. It worries me that um, we as a technical community have not spent more attention to avoid that the media environment was able to like create again these paintings of enemies um, and create an atmosphere where war between countries seems possible again. And that's something that's deeply disturbing to me. Um, and I think this is something we, we have to work on more as a community also to ensure that technical knowledge is not abused for uh, like, yeah, political games by withholding information. Mm -hmm. Um, what All I should right. mention is, um, mm -hmm. as we are only having like two minutes left here or something, um, I did agree to um, be available for a little discussion uh, in the whistleblower tent that's somewhere in that virtual world, and um, the audience will hopefully find it. All right. Uh, so then... or whatever it's called. Uh, uh, so the uh, uh, once once again, what's the name of the of the of the uh, Either whistleblower or tent or whistleblower village? Okay, all right. So uh, 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 go out to the whistleblower tent. Mm. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, after after this talk, and uh, so um, maybe one uh, last question: yeah. um, Is it possible to sue the UK government for their treatment of Assange before the European Court of Human Rights? Um, it's a little complicated. Uh, what's happening right now is, um, and I think other talks have um, are covering it, is that uh, Julian tries to avoid his extradition, and there is specific aspects of this which he might at some point 
be able to address at the European Court of Human Rights. Um, that in theory could stop his extradition, but only if a specific criteria are met, met and so on. How much now the UK government will listen to it after the beer exit and so on is, is and, and due to political atmospheric reasons, that's all a little tricky. The European Court of Human Rights is not part of the EU agreement, so it doesn't matter that the UK stepped out of the EU but it is still an instrument of, of Europe and not of the friendship between the United States and Great Britain. So um, the atmosphere of the British government does not suggest at this moment to be uh, overly sensitive to anything coming from continental Europe, to say it carefully. And that's um, pretty bad. All right. So uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Andy, for your for your talk. Um, for everyone who's interested uh, into uh, for a discussion with you, um, please go over to the whistleblower talk on this channel yeah. at Chaos Zone stage. Uh, the next talk will be uh, reproducible building network infrastructure uh, by Astro, uh, which will start at. Uh, 9.30 p.m. Uh, so uh, tune in for the next cast on the talk as well and uh, that's it for now. Thank you.